Hello and welcome to Number of Periods. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. This function typically computes the number of periods required to pay off a loan, but stick around till the end because our third exercise flips this function into a retirement countdown and it'll show you how fast you can reach your goal. So let's get warmed up in the first exercise. Exercise one. There's two main things to be aware of when you're working with this function and other Excel financial functions. First, the periods need to line up and second, this function operates on a cash flow basis meaning inflows and outflows, positive and negative numbers. So let's say we borrowed $10,000. We have an annual interest rate of 5%. We have a monthly payment of 500. So what is the number of periods? Now there's four values here. Three of them have time periods. In other words, the rate has a time component. It's an annual interest rate. The payment has a time component. It's a monthly payment. And the number of periods has a time component. We're gonna calculate the number of months. So they all have to line up when we're writing this formula. And if one of them doesn't line up, like an annual interest rate, we need to line it up within our function. So let's write the formula. Equals NPER, that's number of periods. The first argument is the rate. Now, we are trying to calculate how many periods, how many monthly periods, so that means Everything else that's time related needs to be expressed monthly. So the first argument is rate. This is an annual rate. So we need to express it as a monthly rate. So we can just divide it by 12, comma. The payment here is monthly, so that's perfect. Comma, the present value, that's the loan amount. It's this value here. And there's a couple of additional arguments. We'll talk about those later. For now, let's close this function and enter and we get about 21 months. So the first thing to be aware of is that our time bound values have to be in alignment. In this case, it's monthly. We could also do quarterly or annual. We just have to make sure they're consistent. And the second thing to be aware of is this positive inflows and negative outflows. The loan here is a positive inflow to me, right? I just got the money. The subsequent monthly payments are outflows to me, so this needs to be expressed as a negative number. If we flip the sign, we're gonna get a bogus or unexpected value. So it's important to keep this in mind. Now that we're warmed up, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. In this exercise, we're gonna assume there's a future value amount. What might that be like? Well, it might be like, I borrowed 10,000, but at the end of the loan term, I'm still gonna owe some balance maybe a thousand dollars and that's often called a balloon payment and that can typically reduce the monthly payment or shorten the loan period equals NPER okay the rate is here but again we're doing monthly payment and we want to find the number of months so these time periods need to be consistent so I'm simply going to divide this by 12 comma the monthly payment is here it's a negative outflow comma, the present value, that's the loan amount, that's how much I got today, that's 10,000, comma, and then the future value. In this case, let's start with zero. That means I'm gonna pay off the loan in full. Close function and enter. And once again, we get 21 months. But let's say at the end of the loan, I still owe $1,000, it's a little balloon payment. We would expect the number of periods to decrease. So if we say that there's a future value of 1,000, the number of periods actually increases. And that doesn't make sense, and why not? Well, it's the sign of our future value. So we flip the sign to negative and hit enter, and now we can see that the number of periods drops to about 19 months. So far so good? Awesome. Now let's get out of debt and let's use this function to hit a savings goal. In addition to these short videos, I also offer formal training. It's built for users at all skill levels. Learn more by using the link in the description. You'll be getting your work done faster than ever. Exercise three. All right, let's see how long it's gonna take us to save a million dollars if we can make a $500 a month monthly payment. Equals NPER. Okay, the rate is 10%. We're once again gonna divide that by 12, comma. The monthly payment is this, comma. The present value is how much I'm starting with. I'm starting with zero, so we'll use this, comma. And the future value is the savings goal of this, close function, and enter. So it's gonna take us about 346 months. And remember, that's assuming everything is monthly, including the interest compounding period. In other words, this is assuming interest compounds monthly. If we wanted to assume interest compounds annually, we could easily change this to years. So here's NPER in years equals NPER. The rate is just our annual interest rate, comma. The payment is gonna be this times 12. 
The present value is how much I'm starting with, and the future value is my savings goal. Close function and enter. So that's about 30 years. So again, just remember that these time periods need to be consistent. And now that our formula is set up, you can easily change any of these values you'd like. If you have a bigger savings goal, a different interest rate, a different payment amount, or if you're starting with a different amount. Just remember the sign matters. Let's say we start with $100,000 and hit enter. We're gonna get some error. We just need to flip the sign and hit enter. And now if we start with 100,000, it's only gonna take us about 20 years. And that's how we can calculate the number of periods in Excel. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me, have a great day. Hey Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 